Hello again, welcome to another Colgonology. Uh, there will be another video going out this week which will have some of my sort of nature notes and rambles from my various meanderings. But um, as there was so much interest in some of the junk uh, sculptures that I posted about last week, I thought I'd show you how I actually built one of them. I'm going to show you how I built my junk scorpion. Now, I did this at a time before I started playing with video and before I knew anything about video editing. It's a couple of years ago. Um, so consequently, I don't have a lot of video, but I've got a lot of photographs. I'll narrate over the top and then there's a video at the end. And hopefully there's something there of interest and it might inspire you to have a go yourself. Look around at some of the junk you've got in your house and have a go. So here we go. Junk, junk scorpion. scorpion. This all began when a friend of mine phoned me up and said, hey, we're moving into a new shop unit and the people who were here before, which was a phone accessories company, have left loads of rubbish behind. Do you want it? You like junk. So I had a look and it was all mobile phone cases and uh, mobile phone keyboards. And I thought, yeah, why not? I'm sure I can do something with that. So I got it home and had a rummage through the sack. Uh, it was a much bigger bag than I expected it to be. But nevertheless, I found lots of good stuff. I started with the claws. There, was a, there were quite a few old bits and pieces there from old Blackberry phones, if you remember them. And uh, I found a couple of those and I had some little orange cap things left over from my printer inks so I stuck those on there boom I immediately had a claw I had a bit of a nozzle from a disinfectant spray bottle so I attached that to a few bits and I found that some of the rubber keyboard inserts that go into these cases would actually wrap around it so I thought oh that's the start of a tail so I thought right let's look at the body so I got a big lump of polystyrene from some packaging cut it into the basic shape and started rummaging through the bag for phone cases that had the right sort of look to them. And there were a few that had uh, like Swarovski crystals or something like that on the outside. They looked a bit like scales. So I used heat to bend those into shape, stuck them onto the outside of the polystyrene and then covered the whole body with these phone cases. Then I added in a couple of triggers from these uh, bleach spray bottles to make the jaws. And then I just started building it up. I looked at my junk box. I found bits to do the arms with. I found some old bass guitar strings and I found lots and lots of things I could use as greeblies. I'm sure you know what a greebly is, but it was a phrase that was coined during the making of Star Wars uh, for the, all those little bits and pieces that make the surface detail on spaceships. Uh, the idea is that, you know, we have no idea what function all these bits and pieces form on the outside of a Star Destroyer, but they just look good. So I covered the body with greeblies, I attached the tail and the claws, and I had a body. I then started looking at the leg assembly. So I had an old reel from some ribbon, I think it was, and I attached to that some bits and pieces of my junk box and a few wooden cogs from an old um, clock toy, wooden clock toy I'd built a few years ago. And I then made the legs. Now for that, I used plastic cutlery, which I used heat to bend into shape, and then used some bits and pieces like beads and uh, the plastic stems from Q-tips, cotton buds, when they were allowed to have plastic stems uh, to make the legs, assembled all of that uh, into a unit, then stuck the unit on the underside of the scorpion. I was pretty much there now. The next thing I realized is that the scorpion needed a sting. So I thought, as it's all been made out of modern mobile phone cases, it will be quite fun if I made the sting look like a 1980s brick telephone. So I carved one out of balsa wood, painted it appropriately, and stuck it on there. I also found some small red beads that I could paint red for the eyes. Then I took the uh, main body of the scorpion outside and gave it a good coating of black primer. And I'm gonna do a slow zoom here over the body so you can see the amount of details and greeblies uh, that I actually covered the thing with uh, to give it the detail that it wants. However, that detail needs to be lifted if you want to really, really appreciate that detail, it needs to be lifted. So what I then did, was I got out some silver paint uh, and some bronze paint and I dry brushed the entire body and I also ran some uh, brown and bronze colored oil washes over the top to simulate rust. And uh, I'll just give you a few close up photographs here to show you exactly how that came out. There we go, see, various details. I then stuck on the eyes and uh, here's some close up details. 
of uh, how it looked once all of the uh, rust detailing and the metal dry brushing had been done. I don't think it turned out too bad. But here are the final beauty shots. Well, I hope that was of some interest to you. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed making it, and uh, the person who now owns it was delighted with it. Um, someone bought it for them as a present. So, always nice to know that something you've made has gone to someone who's uh, appreciating it. Not That's the reason I do it. I make these things because I like making things. If other people like them, that's a bonus. If other people like them and are willing to buy them off me, that's a double bonus, but it's not the main reason I do it. And it's not the main reason anyone should do art, really. You should do it because you love it, because it's, it's your passion, because it makes you happy. Anyway, on that positive note, I shall bid you adieu and say, see you in the next video. Toodle bib.